Skin tones can be a real pain to work with. Either they're too green or they're too magenta. Whatever it might be, you can't figure out how to get them to be the right color. Fortunately, you happen to know somebody that can teach you just that. Welcome back to the channel, Filmmaking Homies. It's your boy, Cody Blue, and today we're talking about skin tones. Skin tones are probably one of the most popular topics that come up when you're talking about picture profiles and camera color science and color grading and anything like that. It's always about your skin tones. How do the skin tones look? Skin, well, and whites. I tend to like my whites, but I really like my skin tones. So today we're gonna show you guys how to get beautiful looking skin tones in Premiere Pro, but first, there's a couple little ground rules that I need to lay down before we jump into Premiere Pro. The first step to getting great looking skin in your footage is to expose your images properly. If you're not getting proper exposure, it's gonna be really hard to get good looking skin tones once you go into post-production. So there's a couple of tips I can give you guys in order to get a good skin exposure when you're out shooting different subjects. The first thing you can do, and it's gonna be a tool that pretty much all of you guys have if you're using a more recent camera, is gonna be to use your zebras. So skin tones usually fall somewhere between 50 and 70 IRE. So if you set your zebras to about 70% and allow a little bit of zebras to show up on your subject's skin, you'll know that your skin tones are pretty much exposed perfectly. Now, keep in mind that every skin tone is different. In most cases, darker people are not gonna show up on that 70 IRE scale. If they do, you're gonna know that they're overexposed. So use that 70% zebras only as a guideline and not as an end-all be-all skin exposure tool. The next thing that you can use, and it's something that I mentioned a little bit in my small HD video, and that's gonna be false color, whether it's regular false color or the spectrum, using those colors is gonna really help you expose your image properly. So if you're looking to really dial in your exposure, I would recommend some sort of monitor or a camera that has false color. It just makes it way easier. All you have to do is expose so that your skin tones fall in that 50 to 70 IRE range. So for me in the small HD focus, that's going to be a little bit of greens and a little bit of blues on my skin tones. Other than that, over time, the more experience you get with shooting people and shooting skin and things like that, you'll be able to just do it by eye and you really won't have to worry too much about all of these exposure tools. So at the end of the day, just practice and get used to what what a good exposure looks like so that when you're out on the field you'll have a pretty good idea of whether or not your skin tones are exposed properly. So a proper exposure is probably one of the most important things when it comes to getting beautiful looking skin tones. But a proper exposure isn't gonna help you if maybe your white balance is off or your color shifted a little bit. So let's jump into Premiere Pro and I'll show you guys the different tools and techniques that I'm using to get beautiful looking skin tones super easy and doesn't really take a lot of time at all. Welcome back to my Premiere Pro, everybody. Now, if you guys have watched any of my videos, you pretty much know how this all works. I have a couple clips lined up for you guys, and we're just gonna go through each one and talk about getting beautiful looking skin tones. So I have a clip from my own personal tutorial videos. I've got a clip from one of our model shoots, another clip from one of our model shoots with a different colored skin tone here. This guy's maybe he's Asian or Hispanic. And then I have a screenshot from my buddy Jahim's video. So Jahim, the creator on YouTube, thanks so much for letting me use this clip. And then finally, we have a special case that I just wanted to briefly touch on so that you guys can get a little more information about skin tones. Now, real quick, before we jump in, let's talk about the tools that I use for color grading and getting accurate skin tones. So on the left here, we have my vector scope, which is the YUV. And on the right, we have the waveform, the Luma waveform. So the vector scope, I'm gonna use to make sure the color of my skin tones are accurate, as well as the saturation. And then the Luma, I'm gonna use to make sure the exposure of my skin tone is accurate. So 70, is typically gonna be where we'll find like white women and then men are gonna be slightly darker and then we get into Hispanics and Asians and obviously black people are gonna be a little less exposed than white people. That's just the nature of their skin. Their skin is darker, so they're gonna show up darker on the waveform. Now with this vector scope, there's one thing I wanted to mention. We have a super helpful tool here, which is the skin tone line. This line here at about 1030 or so, if this was a clock, is our skin tone line. And the way this skin tone line works is it actually represents the color of blood 
underneath your skin. So everybody, no matter what color your skin is, you have the same color blood. And the reality is, is that skin is actually gray. If you didn't have any blood in your body whatsoever, your skin would be gray. So what's nice about that is that no matter what ethnicity you are, what color your skin is, your skin is gonna fall pretty close to this skin tone line. So that's gonna come in super handy when it comes to getting accurate colors for our skin tones. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump in and we'll talk about getting beautiful looking skin tones here in Premiere Pro. So we'll start with this first clip here. Now I actually use a custom white balance for my tutorial style videos such as this one, but for most other videos, I'm using auto white balance. So in this case, my skin tones should be pretty accurate, but I wanted to show you guys this clip first so that you kind of know how the tools work and what we're looking out for. So the first thing that I do is I color grade my clip. I try to get it to look good to my eye and then I'll jump into the tools and check out my skin tone. So let me go ahead and color grade this clip real quick. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now let's take a look at our scopes here and kind of see what we're working with. If we look at our scope straight away without doing anything to the clip, it's kind of hard to read how everything's going. We've got a lot of different colors, a lot of different saturations and exposures. So what I like to do is actually go into my effects controls and I'm gonna add a mask around my skin tone. So I just click on the square box here, it pulls up a square mask, and then I'm just gonna drag the dots around my skin tone. So I wanna try to eliminate anything that's not skin tone. I don't really care too much about obviously hair and eyebrows and stuff. That's not really gonna make a difference, but we wanna eliminate our skin tones. Now we can take a look at our scopes again, and we'll see that all we're showing here is our skin tones. Everything else is totally black, which is down at this zero line here. So the first thing I'm gonna look at is my exposure. Now my exposure is pretty good. Like I said, I want it to be about between 50 and 70. So that's pretty good and I'm gonna go ahead and leave that how it is. Now again, my exposure is pretty good because I'm using the false color on my monitor. So I tend to dial everything in pretty good for my tutorial videos. Now the next thing I wanted to mention is that skin tone line that we talked about before. So we typically want our skin tones to fall on the line or either two degrees above or two degrees below. But I think if you guys just aim for putting your skin tones pretty close to on the line, you'll be fine. So like I said, I use a custom white balance, in which case my skin tones are already falling right on the line, and I know that I have good looking skin tones. So we'll hop back here, we'll delete this mask, and we'll call this clip good. Now taking a look at our next clip, we have a Caucasian woman here, and typically women are gonna be brighter in exposure than men. So a white woman is gonna be brighter than a white man, and the same for all other ethnicities in most cases. Obviously Obviously, all skin tones are different, so don't take that as fact. It just, it depends. But in this case, it does hold true. Her skin is brighter than his skin. So same thing, I'm gonna color grade this clip and then we'll talk about the skin tones. All right, so now we've got some pretty good looking colors. If you guys like the way these colors look, I am grading it with my Rubicon LUT. It's by far my favorite LUT. You'll find it in Blue LUTs Pack 4, and the link is down in the description below. But let's go ahead and talk about these skin tones. So she's my main subject here. I don't really care too much about his skin because he's not looking at the camera. She's our main subject, and she's the one that everybody is looking at. With that being said, as long as I get her skin tones good, his skin tones are gonna be pretty good as well. So what I'm gonna do is add a mask again to her skin tones. I'm going to try to crop out everything that's not skin if I can. If I have a little bit extra, it's not a big deal. But something like that looks pretty good. And now we'll take a look at our scopes. So as you can see, she is a Caucasian female. So her skin is a little bit brighter than what we saw in my skin. She's going a little bit higher than 70, but still somewhere between 60 and 70. Now, if we take a look at our skin tone line here, we can see she's kind of pointing a little bit more towards red, which isn't a huge deal, but I can correct it just a tiny bit. Don't forget that we can have about two degrees or so of difference. It doesn't have to be exactly on the skin tone line, but in this case, she's just slightly too red. So how do we correct that? Now, in most cases, you can fix that by using this tint slider here. So if they're too red, we're gonna drag towards green, which you'll see on the vector scope here, green is down towards the bottom, and that's the direction that we want to move. If she was too yellow, I could drag towards magenta, and the opposite would happen. So I'm gonna grab my tint here, and I'm gonna keep an eye on my vector scope, and I'm just gonna pull it down a slight bit. I don't wanna go too far. So something like that looks pretty good. Now, I could bring it all the way to the skin tone line, but as you can see, that's way too green. So just keep an eye on your skin tones while you're dragging your slider just to make sure you don't go overboard. So I'm gonna drag this down here. 
I think somewhere about seven was looking pretty good. So we'll go ahead and do seven. I'm gonna get rid of that mask and we'll see what it looks like. So that looks pretty good. Here's our before with no color grade. And here's our after with our adjusted skin tone. So again, it looks beautiful. Now keep in mind, the LUT does add a little bit of a creative look. It's making our hat a little bit more blue. It's making his jacket kind of blue, but that's just the nature of the LUT. So keep that in mind. If you don't like some of your other colors, you might just have to choose a different LUT. Moving on, let's talk about this next skin tone here. I'm gonna go on color grade and we'll be right back. Now let's go ahead and take a look at his skin tone. Now keep in mind, he's either like a Hispanic or possibly some sort of Asian ethnicity. So that means his skin tone is gonna be a little bit less exposed than a white person's skin tone. So let's take a look and see what we're working with. Again, first thing I'm gonna do is add this mask. We'll just go here, drag it around his skin tones. I'm gonna try to cut out his hat a little bit. Now you'll see we don't really have a lot of skin tone to work with, but it'll still show up on our scopes, which is pretty nice. So taking a look here, you can see we're leaning kind of more towards red. So his skin is probably a little bit too red, which is kind of what I thought just from looking at it. It's also might be slightly overexposed because he has a darker skin tone. I want his skin tone to be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna bring the exposure down just a tiny bit, not too much. So we're at minus 0.3. And now we'll take a look at working on these colors. So again, I'm gonna drag my tint down towards green and just keep an eye on my skin tones while I do that. And that looks pretty good there. So we're almost exactly on the skin tone line. And now his skin should look a little less red. So let's get rid of this mask and see what that looks like. And that looks pretty good. We've got a super solid skin tone. If you guys check it out, we have our before and our after color graded with the Rubicon LUT. And then I'm just messing with the tint and temperature to get the appropriate skin tones. Now I actually changed this temperature during my color grade because you can tell if I didn't change it, it's a pretty cool image. So just from color grading, I could tell it was too cold. So I went ahead and moved that temperature up and then I went and adjusted my skin tones. So now we have pretty good looking skin tones. This might actually be a little bit too warm. I'm just gonna bring that down. What that's gonna do is it's gonna cool off the image, but it's actually gonna bring the saturation of his skin tone down a little bit as well. So darker colored skin tones usually are going to have less saturation than lighter colored skin tones. Now we'll go ahead and jump into this last clip just so that you guys can see that the tools we're using will work on pretty much any skin type. So this clip has already been color graded. I stole it directly from Jaheem's video. Thanks again, Jaheem, for letting me use this. But we'll go ahead and select his skin tones and see what we're working with here. Cool. So now that we've got that selected, let's take a look at our scopes. And we'll see he's leaning a little bit towards the red box, which I think was pretty obvious before we uh, put the mask on. If you do actually look at this clip, you can see that the clip is pretty red. So we'll go ahead and go into our scopes. I'm gonna drag away from magenta just a little bit, try to get that more on the skin tone line. And I might bring it a little bit cooler as well, just to kind of bring that saturation down a bit. And now we should have a pretty good looking skin tone. So let me delete this mask, we'll take a look. And that looks super solid. I'm not gonna color grade this clip because again, he's already colored it, but here's our before. It's a little bit red, a little bit magenta, and here's our after looking a lot more natural. Now keep in mind, I do wanna make note that skin tones don't always have to be natural. Guys like Sam Colder, they like their skin tones to look a certain way, and that's totally fine. It's all a creative choice, but this video is just about getting beautiful looking skin tones, and I think natural skin tones are beautiful. So the last thing I wanna talk about today is this special case. Now there are gonna be some cases where you can't get natural skin tones. In this example, my couple here is by the fire. By the way, you'll notice this is the same dude from the previous clip. He's a model, so that's why he's with two different girls. Don't worry about it. But they're sitting by a fire, so it's obvious that their skin tones are not gonna be natural looking. They're gonna have a little bit of this orange flare. So let me go ahead and grade this real quick and then we'll talk about it. All right, so we'll go ahead and say that looks good. And now you can see that their skin is pretty orange. So this is just a special case that I want you guys to keep in mind is that if your subject is somewhere close to something that's gonna have a color cast, whether it's a fire or it's like an orange wall, or maybe you've got some orange lighting, you may not want to make their skin tones look natural because if I were to make their skin tones look natural in this scene, one, it's just gonna eliminate the fact that they're sitting next to a fire. But two, once this fire actually turns down, then their skin tones are gonna be way too blue. So if you have something that's casting a color onto your model's skin, 
I wouldn't worry about it. It's gonna look more natural and that's the way that it's supposed to be. So keep that in mind. You want natural looking skin tones when you have natural lighting, but if something is casting a color, go ahead and leave it because that's the way it was when you shot it and that's the way it should be. So there you go guys, those are the techniques that I'm using to get beautiful looking skin tones in Premiere Pro. It's a super easy process and if you just pay attention to that little skin tone line, it's gonna help you guys out tremendously. You'll be able to crop in, make sure the color of your skin looks good and you'll be on your way to better looking footage. So do me a favor, like this video if you like it, subscribe if you wanna see more. If you have any questions about cameras or skin tones or anything else, send it to me on Instagram at CodyBlue underscore. But until next time, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.